Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator News and today we've got four quick updates for you guys so hopefully this will be good information for y'all so stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. First up on the list here, we have FS Realistic Pro version 2 released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. As many of you have probably seen on my channel, the last two videos that I did were based around FS Realistic. This is a fantastic addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Anybody who is familiar with X-Plane and XP Realistic, you will definitely be excited to see that this has returned if you enjoyed that software. What this does is it adds anything from camera shakes to head movements to breathing to external sounds, internal sounds, cockpit gear, and offers a ton of different profiles that can be downloaded as well as you can create your own profiles as every sound has multiple different options and levels and volumes that you can set based on the action of the air or the action or event I should say that is happening within the aircraft. Now, if you have already purchased FS Realistic Core, you can get this for an upgrade of just five, $5 and 60, or excuse me, five euros, um, 560 euros. <laughs> God, I can't talk today, guys. It's Friday. <clears throat> However, if you have not purchased any one at all, uh, you can pick it up for 28 euros. Now, here is the really awesome thing. If you go to the fsrealistic.com, go directly to their website and download the software, you can download the software for free uh, and use it completely unlimited for seven days. You get a seven day free trial. I think anytime that there's a third party application that modifies any kind of game or simulator, doesn't matter what it is, those free trials are critical. And I think it's absolutely fantastic that the developers included that. Guys, I have been running this thing nonstop now for the uh, last four days, trying out in multiple aircraft, and really, really enjoyed uh, this software, and I highly recommend that you guys give this one a shot. Um, this is also, as you can see, really amazing in the fact that it also includes add-ons for the A320 and the PMDG 737-700, which just released. Um, so... This is really, really a fantastic immersion uh, enhancement add-on that I very much so recommend that you guys give a shot. Again, seven-day free trial. Uh, be sure to go to FS Realistics website uh, specifically to download the software and take use of that free trial. Uh, even if you're on the fence, I mean, what's the harm? Give it a shot. Literally, it lo you install it. You load up Microsoft Flight Simulator and the software will launch automatically and pre-designate a profile if one already exists for the aircraft that you have. Uh, here's just a list of some of the things that it can do. Um, like I said, I will leave the rest up to you guys and uh, hopefully you enjoy this add-on amongst the skies of the simulator. Another new aircraft has hit Microsoft Flight Simulator. We did a, a quick snippet about this aircraft a few weeks ago when it first hit the news channels, and that was with Black Square releases the Velocity XL from Microsoft Flight Simulator. The Velocity XL is a goofy looking plane, and yet at the same token, this is definitely an aircraft that I'm going to be picking up and will be reviewing here on the channel, possibly before the weekend is over, if not definitely early into next week. Uh, got a pretty loaded schedule ahead of me here, uh, lots going on here, but uh, I would definitely try to get this out for you guys. As far as the images of the aircraft, again, right on par with what we would expect from Microsoft Flight Simulator and the texture quality uh, that has just become the expectation and norm. Now, one of the big things that caught me right off the bat when I first took a look at this aircraft, I don't know if we have a better shot inside the cockpit here, but as you guys can see, the yoke is missing. And that is because if you caught it on the first image, it's a side stick. So that caught my attention. Definitely very unique, especially for the smaller aircraft. We have the G3000 touchscreen. Again, working title G3000 uh, freeware mod recommended. So obviously gives us the compatibility for it, as well as the GTN 750. So we have a lot of options here that come with this aircraft. Super excited about this 4K textures. Now that's not too uncommon nowadays. I get it. But again, it's super exciting uh, to hear that the developers are keeping up with the uh, external textures and internal texture requirements. 
sounds i love that the sounds are specifically listed um you don't hear that as often or see that as often as i would like and so again as i was talking about just in the last few videos as we were talking about fs realistic sounds are such a huge part of immersion for me um especially again when you fly in vr i think that the, the, one of the biggest way <laughs> there it is right there i just saw that um <laughs> especially when in vr because you have that depth perception you have that full field of view you have the 3d generated you know screen there and something as simple as a sound that doesn't belong there will take you right out of that immersive experience that vr offers so super excited to check this aircraft out again you can see it's for 1999 pounds uh so really not that bad at all i think that's more than reasonable for an aircraft like this and we are definitely going to be checking this one out again hopefully before the weekend is over if not definitely early next week Another aircraft to hit the skies of Microsoft Flight Simulators, Flight Replica's release of the L-4 Grasshopper. Now, this aircraft is very similar to like a Piper Cub. As a matter of fact, there it goes, the pre-war Piper J-3 Cub. Now, I've never heard of the J-3 specifically, but I mean, it looks absolutely just like the little yellow Piper Cub that we have here in Microsoft Flight Simulator that I've flown. Um, very, very cool little aircraft, very tiny, not a whole lot to it with these kind of aircraft. Top speed of 75 miles per hour. Watch out, you speed um, 5,500 airframes is such a small amount when you think about it from 1902 to 1945. Um, did I say 1902? 1942. Um, another very cool aircraft that would be fun to have. Now, it shows that it has a flight model or a air or a excuse me, exterior model with the floats. What I would have liked to have seen is, is the wake effect actually, you know, produced in the simulator. Uh, can you actually see that the aircraft is traveling along the water? That is something that I have noticed with a lot of aircraft that have the, uh, the float capability is sometimes the water effect as you're flying through it are missing. So we'll see what happens uh, with this one. This is another one I will be picking up. Fifteen ninety nine, guys. Uh, that's U.S. dollars. That is not bad at all. I will absolutely jump all of us to fifteen bucks. And again, it's really nice to see these kind of aircraft coming up at the right price point and at a price point, um, especially given that with inflation, the things that they are right now. Uh, it's really nice to see these kind of aircraft coming available and still in reach of the, uh, you know, the average person, if you will. Um, so again, let me know what you guys think about this aircraft. I know there's a ton of Cub type aircraft that are currently available for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this one and uh, what your expectations are going to be. And if you pick it up, if you pick it up, please let me know down in the comments below, because this is definitely an aircraft that will have to wait until mid to late next week before we get it on the channel. But it will definitely be on. On the list and the final one on our list tonight is the flying iron simulation spitfire update we will be flying this aircraft tonight on the channel so there will be a subsequent video coming out after this news update later this evening uh, around the spitfire the spitfire has received yet another update and i really really am always impressed with flying iron simulations and the uh motivation and effort they seem to have in regard to keeping their aircraft up to the standards um, you can see the full list of the change log here we have some flight model tweaks sound tweaks art improvements i mean their updates are never anything to just joke about or spat at they always take the time to really get in down deep and find the bugs and the uh, complaints of the community in revolving around their aircraft and work hard to adjust them and that's really nice to see the Spitfire's flight model has had a massive improvement since its initial release. Um, on the initial release, it flew very similar to just about any other aircraft uh, or basic aircraft that was available in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And now it has truly become an aircraft of its own um, and really come into to what you would expect from a Spitfire. Um, now, with that being said, I need to be careful with that. What I mean by expect of a Spitfire is, unfortunately, my comparison to DCS World. And... You know, that it unfortunate being that that's my only experience to the Spitfire. Um, but the Spitfire is one of my favorite of all time World War II aircrafts. There's just something very majestic and gorgeous about the Spitfire. Um, I'm not a big fan of the clip wing. I'm going to tell you right now, let's just call it that. I know the clip wing gets a higher altitude, which is kind of interesting to me that the clip wing would operate better at higher altitudes because of the smaller wing. But I guess that doesn't really make sense to me. Maybe I have that reversed. Maybe I had that. I don't think I had that reverse. I think the clip wing was designed for higher altitude. Um, but anyway, uh, I digress. 
the Spitfire is an amazing little aircraft. It truly is. And uh, I can tell you right now that I've already sat in the cockpit of the latest update, and it was a phenomenal update. If you are on the fence about picking up this aircraft, I highly recommend you go over to Flying Iron Simulations website and take a peek at it. It is a really, really beautiful aircraft and very, very well flown. Um, so... Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap us up for news and updates for today. Um, we will have mods and tools and updates later on, probably over the weekend. There's a few of those that I want to announce to make sure you guys are aware of. Tonight, again, we're going to have the Spitfire video come out uh, in relationship to the latest update and flying it around, and we're going to check it out. And then uh, we've got some other cool stuff coming throughout the weekend. Thank you guys for all the continued support and the love. Patreon subscribers, YouTube subscribers, you guys are amazing. All those like and subscribes, keep commenting, and I'll see you soon.